Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's Catapult Lockdown Virtual Salon for my discussion with Maria Antonia. Ordonez, who lives and works in Puerto Rico. I am Tony Bethel Bennett, or Ian, it says there, and we. I um, I have the distinct pleasure of working or chatting today with Maria Antonies, who is who used to be my neighbor for many years, and who we see each other in passing, back and forth. So, welcome, Maria Antonies, um, and please, before we begin, I'd like to express huge thanks to the Catapult partners, including the American Friends of Jamaica. Kingston Creative and Fresh Milk for making this series of salons happen. Please feel free to ask your questions in the comment section during the talk, which we'll get to in the Q&A seg segment of the salon. And here we go, Maria Antonies. Antonies Hi. Por estar aquí. Gracias, Hi. Dave. Thank you. Uh, Hi, everybody. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to start a little bit with talking about old San Juan because you have lived there for so long, even though you came there from elsewhere. Give give us a little bit of history and, well, and your relationship. Um, actually, I was born in Cuba many, many years ago. I'm from the first um, exile, the first uh, in the 60s. And uh, we moved to Puerto Rico when I was nine. I'm already 68, so you can sort of, you know. <laughs> I was, I'm, I've been living here for almost 60 years now. And I moved to Old San Juan when I was very young. I just fell in love with the place. It's, um, it used to be a place where a lot of artists were. It was not gentrified when I moved here. Yep. You know, it started being gentrified as soon as artists move in, everybody else moves in artists are willing to live with the cockroaches <laughs> yeah so yeah. um but I, it's been my home and it's been my community um it's been my my place in the world for the last what maybe 45 years wow i mean Thanks. my relationship with it hasn't been that long but it's uh -huh. it's just watch the the progression and the the mm -hmm. transformation um, and I wonder, because you talk about the artists that used to live there, and I used to know some of them when I was a student, but give us an idea, if you like, about how that looked and how that impacted your, your life, your practice. It was wonderful because you move and suddenly everybody is like you. <laughs> I come from a place where, you know, what they call urbanización, it's, um, it's on the suburbs. Um, everybody behaves like they're supposed to. I was an outcast there. So then suddenly you come to old San Juan and everybody behaves here like you, everybody talks like you. Uh, so you feel welcome. And uh, it was very important. It, this is where I started painting. Uh, this is where I became an artist. There was a big community of musicians, especially I was very close to the musicians because my boyfriend was a musician. And uh, so I was part of, um, the group of musicians more than the group of painters. I've always been more with the poets, with the people who write, with the people who make music, than with the people who paint. Maybe could be because, you know, I don't think, I, I think maybe um, visual artists keep them themselves. They don't work together. Right. They're not right. so gregarious, so. But it's, it's also a space where you had the, the La Escuela de Artes Plástica. That's right. Uh, that I, 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 can you comment on that a little bit? Because I know that used to be one of the thriving points in the... In it was, but I did not study there. It's, uh, exactly. I studied at the UPR. Okay. And then I took classes. I took classes everywhere. I took classes everywhere that if somebody wanted to teach me something, I just went there. I did not, I never finished the BA. I never finished anything. Somebody gave a class on um, um, prints, 
So I would, oh, I want to take that class. So I would okay. go and take classes on everything. So I did take classes at La Escuela de Artes Plásticas, which, which was a very, very important uh, place in Puerto Rico and in Old San Juan and important for the arts because many artists come from there. It was the place where they made the artists. So, and then when they were artists, they started teaching there. So, right. um, right. La Escuela is very important. The other institution that is very important is La Liga de Arte. Mm -hmm. It's the Art Students League. Um, it started as a very small place and it started growing. And uh, it also uh, is responsible for making lots of artists in Puerto Rico. So uh, it's all in Old San Juan. Right, right. So the place is full or was. The younger people have moved to Santurce, to La right. mm -hmm. because the rents are lower there. Rents here have gone way up. Yeah. It's been gentrified. It's horrible. <laughs> it Not so many to bars anymore, you know. There's <laughs> Every bar is very fancy. Yeah. The restaurants yeah. are fancy. Everything is fancy. And so you have to go look for the watering holes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elsewhere. And I, I'm hoping that you can comment a little bit on what we were talking about earlier in, you know, Las Hermanas Rivera, because oh. that was such an important place. <laughs> it was. It was such an important place. La Hermana Rivera actually was a cash and carry. Mm -hmm. uh, and when Costco and Sam's came, <laughs> you know, yeah. they stopped being, you know, the, ca the cash and carry for every uh, business in Old San Juan. And so they first had one, I, I always say they took, they, they had one artist who would go there and have a beer every mm -hmm. afternoon. And then they gave him a chair and then another one came and they gave him another chair and then they put a little table and then you know how artists are they start coming in like cockroaches everybody together <laughs> and then one day they decided they were going to bring somebody to sing and then well <clears throat> it became a huge event every friday <laughs> yeah we, we yep. would you you would just know where you can you could go if you wanted to right. hang out you didn't have to be with anybody you just went there and sat down and all your friends were there so it was a very important place um for all of us because if like for i always say for example somebody was it was just it wasn't just a bar it was also a communal space Mm -hmm. If there somebody was in trouble, somebody was sick, every artist would come in and bring their um, paintings and they would uh, uh, sell them and we would get money for them. And, uh, and it, you know, it, it was a really, it was our home away from home. So, but they closed. Yeah. And it's, we have missed it so much, so much. Yeah, I mean, I just think that that is a, an example of a space donde se hace comunidad. Donde se hace comunidad y, y hay donde bailábamos. I love dancing. I mean, you know, you where can I go dance for now? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't no. know. One has really changed. Well, but you know, so how does that work where with art? How does the art come out of this space that used to be so closely knit, but also so transitory in so many ways? Well, it's very, you know, it's the place where you feel comfortable. It's yeah. the place where you meet people. And it's a place where there is conversations about art. That, that is very important. That's the place where projects are born. Mm -hmm. When you get many artists living together and um, working together uh, we would you know let's make an exhibition on this or on that and you you know or um, you had musicians come in and it, it, it was a community of artists once when you have that you feel that you're not alone right you feel that you you know there's other people because like in puerto rico um the government does not provide any kind of uh, 
of a community for artists. You know, they mm -hmm. do not provide anything for artists. It has mm -hmm. to be done. And the museums, they do. They're doing a better job now. They're doing a great job, especially a museum of um, contemporary art. Uh, they do things for artists, but mostly like forever it's been you know us doing things for ourselves so when you right. have a place where you can get together it's good for art <laughs> I, I t totally totally I, re I i remember when uh, the museum of contemporary art really started to take off and mm -hmm. that changed the landscape it changed, a lot especially for the younger generation because yeah. they were feeling a place where they could um be accepted Right. And you talked a little bit about UPR and that you studied at UPR. I mean, that was, that was my formation. So that was in the 70s. Bueno, el mío era un poco más. Un poquito más. Tú eres que en los 80. Los 80, eh, los 90. Los 90, 90. 90. Tú eres más joven que yo, por mucho. Uno, uno, dos, uno par de años, par de años más joven que yo. Sí, bueno. Exactly. Eh, well, the 70s and the UPR were a revolution, you know. Yep. So I, um, between, you know, I always say between love and war, I never never got around to get my BA, you know. So I learned a lot from, um, well, the other artists, basically. The With the UPR, it happened like it happened in Old San Juan. I felt like I had finally come to a place where I felt I could be myself. I come from a very, you know, uh, it's it's a very traditional family. My school was a Catholic school, girls Catholic school. I was, you know, like, <laughs> Mira, who's there? Let me see her. Oh my God, oh my God, is she pretty or what? This hey. is my four-year-old. Oh, Aria, hi. Aria Harry. Uh -huh. And she is, with the pandemic, this homeschooling thing has been... I know. I have two grandsons. They live in, upstairs from my okay. house. They were prohibited from coming in here. <laughs> the thing is, uh, as soon as I close the door, the signal goes. I so I've tried, I've tried closing the oh, door. Oh, so you have to open the Wi-Fi. The wi <laughs> well. No, 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 no. Okay. They don't need mommy, por favor. Sorry. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, no, it's okay. It's fine. I love them. <laughs> when I was at UPR, I never thought this would have been a possibility, but here we go. You know, really? one of the things that Puerto Rico taught me was the importance of the arts, not just as a visual, but as a living space, because you were producing work, but you were also living with it. Yeah. And I There's found that in, in Old San Juan in particular. And I, I'm hoping that you can talk a little bit about your practice as it relates to that experience. Well, there is a lot of artists in Puerto Rico. There's, yeah. there, you know, visual artists, the musicians are something else. The, the popular composers are something else. Um, and it art has... Um, grown a lot visual arts have grown a lot in the last 10 years i'm seeing things that i would never you know that they can compete with anything at international level i'm beginning to see that so yeah. um my practice has always been very very private i am i have a small studio i sort of don't belong to any uh -huh. movement when prints were in, I was doing drawing, <laughs> you know, so I was never part of the printers, which were a big group of people. Yeah. Print, print here is very important. Uh, but I could never do prints because I was never in school long enough to do it. And uh, the kind of prints I liked were, and this is important in my work, the kind of printing I liked was the print you made in metal, which uh -huh. is um, intaglio, um, agua fuerte, that kind of, you need a studio, you need a press, you need um, assets, or you need it, not anymore, but in that moment you needed all of that, and I did not have access to any of that, so what I did was imitate. Right. Imitate the effects of um, 
printmaking in my work. The first one that I have here, the zero one, <laughs> Kyle, if you can put it on, we can see it. It's, um, mm -hmm. yes, uh, if, if you look at it, it's really, it, it looks like a colored um, print. It looks mm -hmm. like a black and white. I do the whole thing on black and white on charcoal. Okay. And then I, I, I fix the charcoal well, and then I put the color on. Ah. So it looks like a print because I wanted it to look like an intaglio. <laughs> right, right. You know, I like, um, there are printers that I used to like a lot, especially South American ones that had this quality of, uh, well, basic, basically black and white uh, uh -huh. with a color on it. And uh, so this talks about love. That's when I was, I was pretty young here. I was about 40 something. I was still worried about love. I was still worried about men. <laughs> I was already married, but you know, it was still, uh, for women, love is very important. It is made, we are made to think that we cannot do without it. And I think we cannot do without it. Nobody can. So, uh, but um, when you have cer certain, when you're not a traditional person, when you have certain consciousness of what your of what your role as a woman is and how much it limits you, yeah. uh, it's there's always a difficult relationship with men. This drawing depicts a dance. It's really a little bit. Um, it has some irony in it. I used to use my sense of humor a lot, so I did not feel like a victim. <laughs> it's that's something you do when you feel victimized. You suddenly say, what, what? Am I a victim of what? And then you start laughing about yourself. Uh, so uh, this is a dance. Um, and uh, it, it, the man is taking, is, you know, the man is the one who chooses you. Right. Then right. you have to say no or yes. So she's being chosen, and I think she's thinking about it. Right. <laughs> and then the other girls are in the back waiting for somebody to come and take them out to dance. You know, I used to be a very shy high school student. When we used to go to dances, I would go in the bathroom so nobody would <laughs> take me out to dance. So this is corresponds to that moment and in my practice I worked a lot with this technique a lot um, but it's been a lonely practice I have never belonged to a group of artists except as friends you know they are my friends but it's not something you you are a part of right you know right. so I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about uh, the fully clothed nature but it's also very <laughs> revealing mm -hmm. because and i think that's that's really interesting because it's so it's it's such an oxymoronic kind of yeah juxtaposition it's a contradiction of, yeah <laughs> it's a contradiction it, well basically I'm, um it's you know it's a way of doing two things i love one is the nude I love nudes. Uh -huh. I love to draw the human figure. And at the same time, I love the, the, the feminine paraphernalia. You know, I like the little purse and I like the uh, transparent uh, um, uh, clothes. And I like the necklace and the little earrings and everything she's wearing, I am having fun with, you right. know. I'm a very girly girl. Okay. I love all of that. You know, I paint my toes and I use my shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's part of uh, it's part of who I am, and it's also a, such a big part of what women are. Mm -hmm. uh, w women and their clothes and their paraphernalia and what they make us wear. It's an it's 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 an imposition and at the same time you love it. There's a lot of contradictions there, especially me being a feminist. I always used to, to think, what am I doing, you know? Why am I dressing my 
women like this. And I said, well, that's me. You know, I'm a feminist, yeah. but I like all the feminine things. You know, and I think uh, art is multidimensional. You cannot decide what you're going to do with it because you think it's not, um, it's not, you know, uh, it's, it, you, you, you have to be contradictory. You have right. to allow contradiction. You have to allow all your levels to talk at the same time. And I can be very frivolous and I can be profound at the same time. It usually works at the same time. So. Right. Right. Speak to me a little bit about that. You know, you, you talk about being a feminist, but being girly at the same so. Give us a little bit well, more. But. Especially the first feminism was very hard on women who wanted to be feminine in the traditional sense. Right. And I have been, you know, I, I've been a wife, a mother, now I'm a grandmother. You know, I, all my roles have been there. <laughs> I've been, and you do have, uh, you, you, as an artist, you have to work through them to be able to work. Because if you have to, you know, take care of your kids and you have to cook and you have to, all your roles are on top of you yeah. and you have to work in your work at the same time. I remember thinking when my husband got up, he had his breakfast and he went out the door to work. And I would say, oh my God, he has the right to go out to work. <laughs> I have to stay here taking care of the house, the kid, you know, and at the same time, you have these, you know, you have rights. Uh, so there is a contradiction with the life you are choosing to live because it's a choice. Uh -huh. uh, after a while, it's a choice. And at the same time, I don't know, you live your roles. You have to live your roles. You don't have to, but I chose to live it. It, it, right. it was a choice. And then there's always this thing. And I'm, a, I'm very feminine in my tastes. When I say feminine, I mean, you know, traditionally feminine yeah. in my taste. And when I, was, when I started considering myself a feminist, this was not well seen. Uh -huh. And I did feel very rebellious towards that. So a lot of my drawings in that moment, all their girl, these girls have what a friend of mine used to call fuck me shoes. They're, they're the kind of shoe, you know, with a little bit <laughs> of a taquito in the back. You know, they're very high heels and they're like this and they have their, <laughs> I, I needed like to get in their face, you know, this is, this is about our rights, even our rights to choose the way we want to dress. You right. Know. So uh, I do consider myself a feminist. I think I, it's it's it's. I mean, it's it's a civil right. Mm -hmm. Everybody is equal, and uh, it's important to defend that. For me, it's important to defend that. Yeah. There are a lot of of, of conversations and today. Uh, there's another kind of feminism nowadays. I. You know, things have come a long way for us. Yes. Yeah. But how does that square? How have you managed to work with your children and your grandchildren as an mm -hmm. artist? You know, do you encourage them into art or is that they don't just paint. letting them take? <laughs> they don't no, paint. they don't paint. I have a young, the, the youngest of my grandchildren, he draws all the time and he likes that right but uh my two daughters the older one is she's a singer okay the older one is a singer she sings beautifully and uh the younger one is she likes art you know okay. they like art they're they, they were born into it and they were raised among artists so you know, but I don't make them go into the studio and do art. The, no, the, no. the grandkids, they do go inside. Do your, does your kid do art? Does your kid? She does. She likes, she likes art. She goes into your studio and she does your things. She does use your she things. Does. 
she does. She uses everything. And yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's interesting because I don't discourage her because I think it's so important for her just to oh. explore. Yeah, I don't discourage them either. If they come, they, they say, Abuela, ¿estás abriendo el estudio hoy? Are you opening your studio? That means I'm letting them in, you know? <laughs> so I, I do enjoy seeing them uh, do this. Um, the, the, my, do my daughters, no. My daughters, I wanted them away from my studio so I could right. work. Right, yeah. And it's a whole generational shift because they are, you know, it's it your in a different, uh, I don't know. I'm a, in, a different, in a different time. place. I'm so, in a different place now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If if I want to tell my grandkids, you go home, please go home. They they have to go home. It's not like that with the kids. No, yeah, they are home. Yeah, they are. Home. You know, they're, 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 yeah. yeah. And can you comment a little bit about the the way you use nudity because I think it's great. I know that um, there might be some pushback in some uh, corners. Well, people, have, you know, sometimes people say I do erotic work. It's not okay. erotic at all. I don't consider <laughs> nudity. It's right, she's right. Just, you know, she's just natural. She's just there. It's not, yeah. I don't consider it erotic. Uh, I think they are, they come into their own body naturally. They they don't feel uncomfortable with it they cover it because it's the coverings are beautiful because they enjoy yes. covering them that's the way yeah. i see the figures in my work it is nudity is not natural yes it's not erotic at all i don't use it I, erotically and i think that comes through particularly in the first first work mm -hmm. because it's so yeah, everything's so happy together. Yeah, it, it's it's it comes not together. it doesn't exactly everything uh -huh. just works well together, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and that says a lot about the art because there are times when it looks like other artists don't have that ha that harmony that harmonious oh. relationship. Yes, you know? I see what you mean. Yes, and uh -huh. the, the 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 work we were discussing earlier with the sidewalk and the um uh, the ramp that, mm -hmm. for this disabled can you talk about that a little please yeah let's look at it it's the number what five i think it's number five uh number five okay kill yeah kyle kyle can you put up number five for us please yeah yay okay Okay, Kyle. I thank you. I started taking photographs of uh, sidewalks because uh, I walk looking down so I don't fall. <laughs> so uh, let, me, let me interrupt there because in in San Juan, in old San Juan, that's really you important fall. because everything is so <laughs> uneven. Yeah. Everything is uneven and immune, and you know, I have a tendency to fall. So one day I said, I cannot fall again. And I started looking at sidewalks. So, and, and things are fascinating. I mean, sidewalks are fascinating. There's so many, you know, they're abstract works of art. And so this one in particular, I, I always like the blue in the ramp uh, for the disabled. It looks like the sea. And uh, I photographed these ramps. And this one also has, if you can see in the, the green, has moss. Mm -hmm. All of that is the, all the, the green is part of the sidewalk. The blue is part, part of the sidewalk. And then I take the photograph by a friend who does Gicles, Princeton. And, um, I draw over them with ink. The red okay. spot in the middle was a technical mistake. I put my finger somewhere I don't know where, I don't know how it happened, and just suddenly <laughs> had a big red spot on the sidewalk. And I said, well, I like that. So I printed it just like that. And uh, right. I started drawing over it. The This is part of a series. Um, 
In Puerto Rico, we have we have um, we we are having a lot of um, violence against women. A lot of women. This is from the from 2019. Um, a lot of women were were you know they were just killed by their compañeros, their life partners, or other men who wanted them and they said no, um, or they were just mistreated and. Uh, it started. Um, it started being heavy on me. I started feeling it heavily. So I did a series of drawings uh, dedicated to these women, uh, which is myself too. Uh -huh. Suddenly, women are not just me. Suddenly, women are also. Suddenly, I am other women as well. You know, I have been a mistreated woman a long, long time ago. I did have a relationship where I was abused. And this drawing is called shame. And shame is one of the things you feel when you are being mistreated. When you are being abused, you, you, you feel ashamed of having somebody do that to you because somehow you are you're thinking you provoked it. Um, if, if the person says, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I love you, this is never gonna happen again, and you, you know, you say, okay, fine, you know, yo te perdono, <laughs> and he comes and does it all over again. You feel so ashamed, you, you do not dare talk to this about anybody. So right. shame is something that women live a lot with. We are also ashamed of not being enough. We are ashamed of not being beautiful enough, uh, a good enough mother, a good enough wife. We are never enough. And now that I am old, I'm never enough because you're not even beautiful. You're not even young, you know? So working through those feelings, which you do have all your life for, from one, for one reason or another, uh, well, I did this drawing, and it's dedicated to the shame of all of us. <laughs> and I, I think it's fabulous. I just want to remind everybody to please put your questions in the sure. comments, and that way we can answer them when we come to the Q&A section of this lockdown salon. So the hands up to the face are mm -hmm. about shame. And shame is really paralyzing for so many women and men. It is, everybody society, feels it, of course. Yeah, yeah. And society works to somehow re-empower that shame. I mean, they, they, how do we get around that? Well, society tries to standardize us. Right. We need to be standard not to feel shame. And nobody's standard, nobody is. So, and um, I, I want to talk a little bit about men also because I talk a lot about women because I am a woman and I know my situation is, it's, it's, I talk about myself because it's what I really know about. Mm -hmm. When I mm -hmm. talk about myself, I talk about other women. But men have a horrible uh, place in society as well, in patriarchal society. Yeah. What they are asking of them it's just not, you know, it's it's just like what they ask of us women. You need perfection in another sense. Yeah. So, uh, yes, shame is something imposed on all of us because we are supposed to be standard. We are yeah. supposed to be just like this. Where you're supposed to be a white, um, a straight man. <laughs> Everything else is not accepted. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so, so if that's not what you are, you're always going to feel shame. <laughs> the others are empowered. Pero nosotros estamos jodidos. Y desafortunadamente la, la mayoría de la gente no es white ni, ni straight men. I mean, no. that's the, the population. That's not what we are. Most yeah, of us exactly. are not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. And I, I'm hoping that you can pull up another of the works and, and just look at the way the women who are in the frame 
it's an amazing coming together of so many women. That's um, Las Amigas de la Sirena. That's number That's 04. 04. Okay. 04, Kyle. Kyle. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's Kyle, right? Kyle, yeah. Okay. This is the Friends of the Siren. Uh, I was um, writing to you when we talked about this um, that I'm not sure, but we have a lot of women I know, a lot of women artists talk about mermaids. Yep. And uh, the mermaid is actually um, the different woman. I think, I don't know why we like it mm -hmm. because it's a mystery for me, the, the mermaid. Um, this work is, is a work of solidarity. Uh, it's the tribe. Basically, it's uh, one, uh, one, uh, one starts, at least I started, you know, talking about myself only. And then other women started coming into my consciousness. And then suddenly I understood I am part of a tribe. And, uh, and that makes me feel empowered, you know? So um, there's a hundred and one nipples <laughs> in that drawing. I actually counted them. <laughs> I thought it was so funny. They're all nude, of course, partly nude or the, right. <laughs> everything is transparent, you know? Uh, so, um, She's in the center, the mermaid uh -huh. is in the center, something is happening with, I don't know. I never know, you know, I never right. know what I'm drawing. Uh, and, 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 and then the God, which is a man, he's the only man, he's blowing on them. <laughs> Suddenly, when, you know, I realized uh, about, about a month ago, I, I was doing some um, posters mm -hmm. about, um, a need we have to de declare um, state of emergency in Puerto Rico um, regarding the violence to mm -hmm. women. So I did a poster and I decided I, wanna, I was gonna use part of this image. I said, this guy is blowing on them. I mean, you know, they're, he's trying to blow them away, but no, he couldn't. They are ascending, <laughs> you know, after you do the drawing and you start, yeah seeing what's happening in it. But it is a tribe of women giving support to the mermaid, who after all is the woman who is different. Um, we don't know. Actually, she, the mermaid is the woman who is trying to attract men. Mm -hmm. That's the patriarchal explanation, no? She's so right. in, in, in the myth. She's a woman who's trying to attract men to later kill him. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. none of my um, women artist friends are using that mermaid. They're reinterpreting the mermaid as something else. Right. And, and I really don't know what. I re I'm really not sure. Okay. I'm really not sure why we use mermaids. <laughs> Yeah, it's such a big part of history, really, yeah. and such a big part of a it's a huge myth. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a big myth, but my the, the the women artists I see are reinterpreting it, and I am not sure. I have to ask them. <laughs> I haven't been able to ask them yet. I suddenly realized I wasn't sure what kind of mermaids we are drawing. But it is. This is a. This is a drawing about solidarity. It is a drawing about uh, women giving protection mm -hmm. to a woman who is different, who is in a fragile state. She is in the middle of the water. She's alone, and they are there to protect her. That's right. what it is. Right. It's protection. I think that is amazing. I think it's really amazing because it speaks to so much of, of what society or a society of sisters can do. Yeah. 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 It does. And this is something 
but as you said, I know from having worked on gender-based violence in Puerto Rico, that's a serious problem. And working with young people who go to university and then they think that, you know, this is never going to happen to me. And then it happens to them. And as you say, the shame means that they withdraw and there is no healing that is, is possible until somehow they can break that shame. Yeah, because well, like, one as an artist always tries to heal a, uh, you know, through your work and then you hope that as an artist you can offer healing people mm -hmm. who look at your images. So I think that's one of the things art does actually. At least it does for me, especially, for example, poetry is very right. healing to me. And uh, so is music, mm -hmm. more than visual arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, they, are, they, they talk to me, they um, me alimentan, no? Mm -hmm. are, it's food. Yeah. And I remember when we were younger and all San Juan was like, the the point where music just happened and it Everywhere. was spontaneous so, yeah and it was mm -hmm. some days it was spontaneous some days it was planned mm -hmm. and i think i think that has changed a lot it has there is a place um in el callejón de la tanca you have you must have been there it's mm -hmm. it's wonderful live music except that they play it so loud it's you know it's a torture for neighbors but Wonderful things do happen there, music, musically yeah. wise, um, but it's not what it used to be. Not anymore. No, right. no. No, I remember places like El Escenario, Aquí se puede, and uh, there was just real community mm -hmm. vibe. Sí, and then when sí. In the Fiesta de San Sebastián, you know, the, it was a, a real cultural coming together. And it is. how do you feel now? I mean, because. I, I was in Santurce in February and I was looking at the way there's so much mural art going on there. How, how, how do you feel about that? Like, well, where does that I think, take you? Well, I love it that young people are doing, you know, it, it, every generation has a way of expressing their worries and, and their way, you know, the way they are. And, and, there's a whole generation doing wonderful things. Not every mural I like, because some right. of them, I sometimes I think they are not um, integrated to the place where they, you know, they do any mural anywhere. But there's um, there's a lot of uh, young people doing wonderful things, uh, and they're doing everything. They're doing video. They're doing performance. They're doing um, mural art. Uh, there's a big, you know, community of young people coming together to do art in Puerto Rico, and they're good. They're good. So that's uh, very, it's, it, you know, it makes you feel hopeful. Mm -hmm. Makes you feel hopeful. Right now with the pandemic, not just the pandemic, we've been three years in a, a big crisis. We had a so, hurricane that, you know, and yeah. when we started, you know, like everything started working again, we had um, earthquakes <laughs> at the yeah, beginning yeah. of the year. Yeah. And then the pandemic, you know, it's been three years that have been difficult uh, for the arts in Puerto Rico. And now with the pandemic, it's been, frankly, you know, yeah. every, every, uh, every one of us who had like an exhibit in mind or a concert, I am doing a, I'm doing a, um, Un cartel, uh -huh. uh, publicity for oh. a friend who has um, performance and uh -huh. she doesn't know when it's going to be. She doesn't know if it's going to be. And, you know, working with that uncertainty is has been difficult. So we'll get over it. But right now it's sort of like music on the street. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, again, I just see so much resilience, though. Because as uh, La Bofetada que nos dio Maria, sí. Irma, even with that, people are just like, mira, ya, no, yo no voy, no me rindo. 
Sí, sigo. hay que ir para adelante, para adelante, hay que seguir, hay que seguir. Sí, aquí nadie se rinde. Pero, yeah. I mean, we, we, we've been living in a colonial state where if, if you give up, I mean, yeah. We, yeah. we wouldn't even be speaking Spanish or eating arroz con habichuela, you know. So this country sometimes, you know, I see it from afar as a Cuban because yeah. I am Puerto Rican, but I also can look at something as, as from afar. And I sometimes say, why do they think they don't have a really, uh, why why is not, um, como hay un de identidad. why is there an identity crisis in this country? I mean, right. it's a very delineated culture. It is, you know, yes. with its yep. music and with its language and with its personality it is very well delineated i have no mm -hmm. i have no idea it is colonialism is horrible it makes you feel that you're not enough <laughs> right? exactly exactly and i'd like another to, uh, reason to feel shame <laughs> all the, always these mechanisms are just incredible oppression is a very unfortunate thing so let me ask if there's anybody who wants to ask maria antonia any questions, please? Uh, we only have a few minutes left. We may have a few questions. Ask away. Um, uh, Annalie has a question. I know you were a member of the Associ La Asociación de Mujeres Artistas de Puerto Rico. It, did you feel a sense of solidarity or belonging within this association? What did that alliance offer you? Well, that alliance basically offered me my career. <laughs> I came into that um, when, when I was very young. I'm not really that young, but I, I'm a late bloomer. I started doing art uh, when I was, I, I always did art, but I started as a professional artist when I was already almost in my 30s. In, I must have been 30, 32 when I joined um, Mujeres, de, Mujeres Artistas de Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and it offered the solidarity of other women. Uh, the older artists were very protective of us who were younger there, especially one artist in particular, Mirna Baez, I don't know if you know her. Yep. Uh, she is. She was a wonderful artist, and she was very present in Mujeres Artistas, they're always she was always very protective of us and she was like a teacher for us and um there was also other women who started who were feminists and that's when that's when i actually um knew about feminism as a movement and um i defined myself as a feminist once i was in mujeres artistas so i did see, feel the sense of solidarity and belonging here and it did offer me a lot. Yeah, it did. It was the it offered me. It gave me my career basically. Muy bien, muy bien. And how does that make you feel now? Do you feel that same sense of protection for a younger artists who may happen to be women, or is it less? There, there is. Uh, they are working in groups. Okay. The younger girls are working in groups. They have um, associate, not, not really associations, they um, have collectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they work as a collective to do murals and they work as a collective to do, uh, to give um, uh, the apoyo to each other. So uh, I think they have a lot of apoyo with one another and they do have more of a chance of being, um, este, de tener presencia, having a presence in the in, in the art world, than right. we had, my generation had, uh, for a while. Uh, they are very active. The younger girls, they are very active. For a while, they weren't. The generation before mine, I think, was had to push for you know harder right. but right now the girls who are out there <laughs> they're great <laughs> they are great but that says a lot too about the activism 
whether it be visible or invisible of una asociación así de sea libre o no sí. Yeah. sí bueno la asociación de mujeres artistas stopped eh, about yeah. 20 years ago mm -hmm. it was like um, hubo como un vacío ahí eh, grande eh, en cuanto a apoyo a las mujeres eh, pero right now they are they are not in associations so much as like I say they get together they work in collectives they um, eh, cooperate one collective with the other it's it's very beautiful the way they're working and they are doing great things you know right now nobody's doing anything but <laughs> a year ago they were doing a lot because and there is a lot of activism there's a lot oh, yeah, of yeah, activism yeah. Uh, 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 women act women are very active women did the basically the summer of 19 which for everybody else we had a huge um, out, out, como se dice, como se dice un, una, well, we took out the governor of Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's that, a, something that never, ever happened in this colony before. Right. And we take it and the women were in La Vanguardia, at the Vanguard. Mm -hmm. They were in La Vanguardia. So there's a lot of activism from women and from, you know, all other political activism here. And I think that that speaks a lot to the decolonial process because it's so, colonialism, as you say, is, is so entrenched that any step outside of that system is, is a big step. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the crisis of identity is also a big step. And to, to be activists uh, in this, to make art, I saw some of the most amazing art pieces involved in the, the physical activism on the, mm -hmm. on the streets. Right. So that, that is really, that's a whole practice of decolonialism. It is, and I think right now, today is election day in Puerto Rico. I, I, yeah, <laughs> that's right. I I, I'm almost covering oh my, my eyes because I don't know. It's it's going to be a very interesting election. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah. So uh, I, I think there is a lot question. of activism. Sorry. Okay, great, uh -huh. great. Uh -huh. uh, Catherine says, hi. hi, Maria Antonia. Can you share more on how connecting with Caribbean artists through the LVS program has impacted the identity crisis you mentioned? Has anything in particular stood out to you? Hey, there you go, good question. Yeah, well, one of the things that has stood out is the fact that we are so isolated, Puerto Rico is so isolated from the rest of the Caribbean. So suddenly I start listening to these, um, actually I was going to do this in Spanish and I decided as I was telling um, Tony that we should do it in English because I had I wanted to have you know everybody who could listen to it from the other participants not necessarily now but I know you have people um, you you have uh, you can access these on YouTube later they, they could understand you know because Puerto Rico is absolutely we are not even you know we are not part of the Caribbean not mentally we they, they they have made us think that we belong to the U.S., which because we are a colony and we are looking towards the U.S. for our identity, which is nothing to do, you know, with the U.S. We are part of the Caribbean. So this has impacted me very much in that, in that sense. And um, it has made me start looking. Uh, I, I have even looked for you in the map <laughs> for all of these islands I has I has I said wait a minute I'm I'm not even sure I know where they are so I started looking in the map I you know what I sent for I sent for the book that they had on the chat it's it's about um, art in Barbados ah, I okay. sent for it I found it in cool. Alibris <laughs> so I said to her, I'm so excited that I'm gonna have it. So I'm very excited. I was talking to my husband and I said, the minute we can get on a plane and travel, I'm not going to Europe or anything else. I'm going to the Caribbean. 
it's, you know. The, the pandemic has really changed our lives. I mean, it, it has, has made us much more insular. Many of us were insular before, but it has just shut down so many of the contacts that we had. How do we, how do we come back from that? Oh, well, for me specifically, it has not, it has made like, um, participating in this has been really important for me. You know, it has, it has, it has seen, I, I, I can see, I, you know what, I think we want to travel more. Mm -hmm. I think that has been the biggest limitation, especially when you live in an island, you depend upon getting on an airplane for everything. So yep. suddenly you say, Contra, I could do this before, not anymore. The minute I can get in a plane, I'm getting in a plane again. So uh, you come back from this. It's not, fíjate, I think you come back from it pretty easily. I think what's difficult is living through it. Mm. It's having the patience. It's knowing that you are going to live through it and you are not going to, you know, that this too shall pass. <laughs> it will, it will. It's, I think it'll be another year. I think for, for, for me, Puerto Rico has shown me and just living in old San Juan made me a different person without the, those years. And that, that was like two decades of my life. 20 years you lived here? Yeah, pretty much going and, and coming. Coming and going, yeah. Uh, it made me a, think differently. It made me live differently. It, it made me much more aware of the nuances within all San Juan, but also within the, the La Isla, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Las Montañas, the West Coast, you know, the South Coast, yeah. Bond. and and because I was with these students all the time, they were just blowing my mind in different levels. And then, of course, you I are, come you are a teacher then. You are a teacher. Yeah. You are a teacher. It's something very ingrained in you. Is but it, it was it was fun. It was of course. It, it wasn't fun when the electricity went off after whatever <laughs> hurricane that was, and it stayed off. For, we we were without electricity during Maria for about yep. two months or three. Yep. You know and what? I'm. I, I, it, it's. It, it, I'm remembering taking the bath with the cold water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Even though it, even though it's hot here, you want to use, you know, warm water anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But thank so, you so much. It's been so great chatting with you. I think. We oh, have and to... I'm hoping you come back to Puerto Rico and we can talk in person. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> it, you know that that was the plan for Christmas, but I think this is a a COVID Christmas and. Yeah, it it's is. not going to happen. It so, is. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, and I think I'm going to have to miss San Sebastian yet again. Because I'm not sure we are going to have San Sebastian. Uh, right, right. So that you know that is a big change. But like you it say, is. we can we can make art from from this for years to come. Yeah. Yes. It, this is going to be, and and we're going to survive this. Yep. You have to take care, but. We're going to survive it. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Maria Antonia, for being here, for sharing so much with us, and for just bringing it this way. And in closing today's song, I'd like to express huge thanks to the Catapult partners, including the American Friends of Jamaica, Kingston Creative, and Fresh Milk for making this, seri this series of salons happen. And please remember to join us for the next Catapult Lockdown Virtual Salon at 1 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time on Friday, 6th of November, 2020, with Andre Bagu, Trinidad and Tobago, who will be in dialogue with Lisanne Godesai Charles Saba, or Saba. And again at 4 p.m. when we will speak with Beatrice Janine Figueroa de Puerto Rico. Remember to subscribe to the Fresh Milk YouTube channel where you can watch all previous LVS sessions 
and be notified of upcoming live streams. Thank you again, Maria Antonia. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. Y nos vemos pronto, espero. Sí, ojalá. <laughs> Un abrazo virtual. Un abrazo. Un abrazo. Virtual. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.